If you haven't seen it before, I took this concept art of this Porygon Wii from the artist Finn, and I made it real. But then I received a message, or a challenge if you will, that if I made consoles out of both Porygon 2 and Porygon Z, I would receive an incredibly special gift. So I guess it's about time for my Porygon to get a bit of an upgrade into the era of high definition. So let's start by turning Porygon 2 into Porygon U. Clever, right? It wasn't my idea. And thankfully, Finn was more than eager to work with me to make these sequels happen. Now, the first draft was pretty good and had all the components you would need for a Porygon 2 Wii U. But in my mind, I had this idea it would be more of a cross between like a home karaoke machine and the game sphere from Drake and Josh. Because Porygon 2, much like the game sphere, well, it's spherical. <laughs> spherical. So I sketched up my own version of the console. And uh, this is why we still need real artists. Because somehow Finn was still able to take this and make it into this beautiful poor Wii Gun 2. But before I could even start modeling, I wanted this to be a true upgrade from the poor Wii Gun 1. And I figured I could upgrade the sensor bar portion. You see, as cool as it was to source all the parts from a Japanese electronics store, the actual sensor bar board could have been a lot cleaner. So I figured I could design my own board and I'd have the power going through this main board with some infrared LED clusters being populated on some breakout boards. So over the next two days, I taught myself how to fabricate a PCB from scratch. And before you go skipping around in the video because you don't care about PCBs, don't worry, we're gonna be opening up a Pokemon pack as a treat. And we start with Weasel. All right. So step number one is to choose your software. I went with KiCad because it's free, open source, and basically just had everything I needed. Come on, come on. <laughs> Tap to go to the next one. Okay. Oh, Cyclozar. All right, battle of the mids over here. Now step two is the schematics. This is where you lay out all of your parts, you figure out all the logic and the size of your board, all the basic stuff. Come on. Oh, you tap on the, you tap on the. I think it's pretty clear at this point I don't play TCG Pocket. Then you need to define your parts, which involves getting all of the different databases of all the different information from the resistors and all the chips you're going to be using. Oh, Abra. Okay, I like that one. Then you get to your PCB layout, where you actually put all the physical components on the board and you do all of the different electrical traces to make sure everything's connected. Ooh, Goldingo! Let's go! I had to pull this guy out from the vault to celebrate this huge dub. <laughs> Hey, editing Big Rig here. Uh, I also don't know why I'm posing as if I just caught a big fish. Um, okay, back to the video. And then we get to our final process, ordering and assembling. And typically this is really annoying because you have to have all these different Excel spreadsheets of your bill of materials and your board outline and your Gerber files. Not that Gerber, not that Gerber, that Gerber. And you have to make sure all of these are correct because it tells the factory exactly what parts you're using and exactly where they go. But thankfully, all of that is made a lot simpler thanks to today's sponsor, PCBWay. They make the rest of the process a breeze with their KiCad plugin, which allows you to start your order directly within the software without having to worry about a bunch of spreadsheets. From there, you can customize everything. You can choose the color of your board, set all of your preferences, and if you need any help, you can ask an actual human expert if you have any questions. And if you're lazy like me, or if the mention of a soldering iron makes you say, I am so out on this. I'm out. I'm out. PCBWay also offers assembly services. That means they'll actually populate all the different components on your board, so you don't have to worry about, you know, burning your house down. Oh, and they don't just do PCBs because they also offer 3D printing and CNC services. And if you've watched this channel for a while, you know how good of quality those 3D prints are. So if you want to get started, click my link in the description below and huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now, let's see how those PCBs turn out. Oh, these look, these look clean. Oh, oh no. So this is the power board for the two sensor lights. You'll plug one into this side, one into this side. USB-C, and look at that, it's me. And uh, I guess I have a whole bunch of these now, so uh, gotta figure out what to do with that. Here comes package number two. And here's one of the light boards with the infrared lights on them. 
and oh, it just came out so good. Now I realized I had some screw ups like reversing the positive and negative on the breakout boards and I could have clumped the LEDs a lot closer to each other. But hey, it was my first time, so I'm totally okay with doing a redesign down the line. But for now, it's time to model everything out. I modeled Porygon 2 and all of his lumpy glory in Onshape and used some 3D scans from fellow YouTuber Wesk mods to basically just chunk out the shapes from the Porygon 2 model. And I'm reusing the tailpiece from the previous Porygon, so we still have a place to attach the neck microphone stand thingy. So with all of our pieces in play, it's time to print it out. But as I waited for everything to print out, there was a lot more work to do. Because unlike the original Wii, I don't exactly have colors to choose from for a shell swap. So with the help of a very young Jerry rig everything. All right, today we're gonna take apart one of the brand new Wii U's. I was able to take apart the console and the Wii U game tablet with absolutely no problems. Uh, no, no. How are you supposed to avoid having this happen? Like, ah. Oh, calm down. Replacing that's like five bucks on eBay. You still have the screen intact and that's all that matters. Now I just gotta scrub these things down with 400 grit sandpaper, because in order to get the paint to stick, you have to remove the glossy surface. And too many coats of paint later, we finally have our recolored console. Now with my magic clap, I can put back together the console and also the tablet. Uh, that usually works. Oh, so it turns out I completely destroyed where the ribbon cable is supposed to go for the screen. So that's cool. So after spending another $60 and another hour of my life, I was able to conquer the greatest foe I've ever faced and finally put it back together. And I do have to say the red tablet is a really cool look. Uh, it wasn't worth the effort, but it's a really cool look. And now that we have everything printed out, oh, and don't forget the eyes, we can just snap everything into place. Oh, I did what? I don't know what I was thinking to accomplish with that. Okay, I swear beyond that, everything snapped into place great. And of course, the feet snap in with magnets, and so does the schnoz. And after screwing in the microphone stand, and securing down the power button and the charging port for the sensor bar, and sliding everything into place, poor Wii Gone 2 is finally complete. And it has its own custom boot screen, and the sensor bar works even farther away than the original poor Wii Gone, which I think is a great touch. Now, to test everything out, I figured that I would load up Wii Sports Club? Oh, no, 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 no. Fine. Vibes weren't even immaculate. I gotta get a lock for that door. No, to test this, we're gonna launch the only Wii U game that has Porygon 2 in it, uh, Pokemon Rumble U. Now, some people might say that Pokemon Rumble U is one of the worst Pokemon games of all time. Because it is. Anyways, if I still want that mystery reward, I think it's time to move on to Porygon's final evolution. It's dubious evolution, if you will. The plan is to turn Porygon Z into the Porygon Switch. Er, Porygon Switch. That one also wasn't my idea. This time, thankfully, the design was a lot more straightforward. And even though Finn was a little worried about how I could get something of this shape to just sit up on a desk, I said, that's my problem to worry about. Thankfully, the 3D modeling was a lot more straightforward this time around, except for these crazy eyes. I am still struggling with curved surfaces and interlocking parts. It's, it's a nightmare, trust me. But with everything laid out, it's time to print out. So after gluing everything in and adding this somewhat sketchy dock situation to the tail, all you have to do is insert your switch into the plug and then seal it in with the magnetic top. And let me tell you, it's in there sturdy. And now for my favorite part, these Joy-Con rails that magnetically snap to the sides to make the arms. Then I just have to prep the microphone arm neck thingy. And to make the Porygon switch actually uh, float, I have this hook system that allows me to mount it to ledges. And uh, as you can see, it's currently at kind of a weird angle, but thankfully I have a stool that can save the day. Wow, that's exactly what I wanted. And also, thankfully, we can boot into a much better game to interact with Porygon Z. So there we have it. All three Porygon consoles together. So I think it's about time I open this thing. Congratulations! You've just won the Porygon plush! 
You can put it on your shelf that is holding way too many other plushies. You can hang it from your rear view mirror. And you can even take it for a walk. Come on. It's okay. We can go at your pace. Okay, maybe you should just put it on your shelf. So if you're looking to adopt a Porygon plush today, check out the Kickstarter in the link below. Big Crates has no association with a Porygon plushie production or Kickstarter. With the exception of this promotion, nobody was exchanged information to this promotion. Big Crates is allowed to keep this Porygon plushie, which is incredibly badass. Okay, and with that, the Poor Wee Gone Saga comes to an official close. As a reminder, you can check out my 3D printing files on my Patreon, and thank you for sticking around to the end, and special thanks to the executive level patrons. Evan Timmerman, Pow Pow, Harley Jean, Grandma Watson, Marco Carini, Sally and Dave, Zebramang, Jimmers, Don Necco, Jameson Zabalos, and Connor Rhodes.